Hello there, my RPG lovers, and welcome to another video. Biomutant is pretty much the only bigger RPG release that we had in recent months. This game was in development for quite some time now, the first gameplay trailers started appearing way back in 2017, and right from the start it managed to gather a lot of attention. The unique post-apocalyptic setting with silly characters and a really promising gameplay is what stood out from those trailers, at least for me. I started covering Biomutant back in early 2019 and ever since then I wanted to get my hands on this open world RPG. Experiment 101 is a small studio so it's not surprising at all why we had to wait almost 4 years for this game to finally come out. But was it worth the wait? Well, yes and no. To be honest, this is probably one of the hardest reviews that I ever did, simply because I have so much mixed and conflicting feelings about almost everything in the game. Before we start analyzing every major feature, I want to address the pricing for the game. Spending 60 bucks on a game should usually mean that you can expect a AAA experience, right? However, Biomutant definitely doesn't feel like a AAA RPG for many reasons. So the price is absolutely ridiculous, it should cost around $30 if you ask me. If that's everything you wanted to hear from this review, there you go. But if you are interested in my analysis of every major feature, you are more than welcome to continue watching. The world in Biomutant is absolutely gorgeous up to the point where it gets really difficult to find something to complain about. The color palette is really vibrant and probably a bit oversaturated, which is a strange thing to say considering the post-apocalyptic setting. But the art style and the silly theme of the game will almost make you forget that this is supposed to be a post-apocalyptic environment. Although the main story tries to experiment a bit with moral dilemmas, which gives this game a more serious tone, but more about that later. Biomutant has a couple of different biomes to explore and each of them is visually distinctive. It's one of the reasons why exploring this open world can be a lot of fun even if you're not doing anything in particular. There is a day and night cycle and a weather system which can substantially change the visual style of each zone. But I wish the weather system had something more than just raining. I hope we get some more weather conditions in future updates because they could make the visuals even more impressive. When it comes to the art style, it's actually a lot more grounded in reality than I expected it to be. And I don't say that as a bad thing, not at all actually. This is not your typical cartoony RPG, that's what I'm trying to say. The terrain and the design of the world in general is visually great in my opinion. The environments are leaning towards realistic style rather than cartoony. But that's probably not so obvious because each and every character model in the game is goofy and definitely cartoony. I would say that one of the reasons why they blend so seamlessly with the environment is the color palette. It's highly saturated, which is quite apparent, especially if you focus on the grass fields. I can see how some people might not prefer this, but I personally love it. What surprised me the most is a very decent amount of character models in the game that are not copy and pasted. Sure, you can see a lot of similar NPCs, especially when it comes to clan members and some elite monsters, but I think they did a good job with visual variety of these fluffy looking characters. Double A RPGs are usually struggling with repeated models, it's not hard to notice when they copy and paste the same assets all over the map. And while Biomutant does a decent job with character models, unfortunately we can't say the same about the outposts in the game. Once you explore one of these outposts, that's pretty much it. I'm quite sure that the majority of them, if not all, are basically identical. Not just visually, but also when it comes to the placement of assets. And that's a shame, because you will visit more than a couple of these outposts, it's really hard not to notice. The performance is okay for the most part. I only had some issues in the first couple of hours in the game when the performance was all over the place, especially in this specific area for some reason. To sum up the graphics, Biomutant looks great and it has one of those art styles which will probably keep the game visually pleasing for years to come. No major complaints here.
Even though the story and characters in Biomutant are light-hearted, the actual main quest of the game is a bit more serious. The world is basically dying and you will have the option to save it or destroy it. These four huge monsters called the World Eaters are threatening to destroy the World Tree and one of your main goals is to prevent that from happening. I don't think there is a way around this, I'm pretty sure that you have to kill them all in order to complete the game. Which is kinda ironic because the game constantly reminds you that you have a choice when it comes to saving or destroying the world, yet you can't choose to not kill these monsters. I mean, if I want to destroy the world, why would I want to fight them? We have the same goal, right? And those fights, oh boy, we'll get to that when we start talking about the gameplay. Besides that main quest, you do actually have a choice when it comes to saving or destroying the world, but the game failed to make me care about that. Probably because I didn't expect it to matter a lot in the end, but this could be my personal problem with quests like this in RPGs. When the main narrative in the game is revolved around saving or even destroying the world like in this case, I expect all of that stuff to happen at the very end of the game, which is usually what happens. So it feels like everything you do throughout the game is for that major build up at the end. You get a cutscene or two and the credits roll. Unless the game has an amazing ending or even the option to continue playing where you have to face the consequences of your actions, I stop caring very fast. Biomutant is not the only game that does this, it's a common thing in RPGs and games in general. Anyway, right from the start and throughout the whole game, you will have these dialogue situations with two different options. Yeah, you basically have a devil and angel on your shoulders. Each of these choices will affect your aura, which is a stat in the game that not only affects the story and dialogues, but also the gameplay. In order to get some specific abilities, your aura has to have a certain amount of points. I think this system was fairly interesting, especially because it affects the gameplay, so that gives you a stronger reason to care about it. And the dialogue between your good and your evil side was always fun to listen. Wait, no! Uh, bright light blinds! It's, it's dangerous! I've got all the cold sick burns you need, Dark. Oh, do you have to insult me over this? I don't have to, but I want to! <laughs> Speaking about listening, let's address the big elephant in the room. This game is completely based around narration. Not only the story, but basically 99% of the game is being narrated. That wouldn't be a problem if the game was around 5 hours long or something like that, but it's not. I would say that the average playtime is around 25 to 35 hours, based on my experience at least. The voice actor that does the narration is great, if not amazing, but that's not the point. The narration is just overdone, to put it lightly. The game feels the need to narrate even the most insignificant events. Back in the spot, directed. I really don't know who thought this was a good idea. I've set this option to zero throughout the whole game, and my dude just didn't give a fuck. Great view from up here. It's almost like he turns into a shy version of himself because he would make a bigger pause between dialogue lines and then start translating. And that's another big problem when it comes to this design decision. He's actually a translator most of the time because every single character in the game, except the angel and the devil, is basically speaking gibberish. That by itself is really interesting and it gives the game a lot of charm. Each of these characters have a unique way of speaking and they have pet names, which is quite appropriate for how they look. The narrator usually waits a bit before he starts translating and he speaks very slow in general, so almost every dialogue scene can feel like a drag. Turning him off completely by reducing the voice volume is not an ideal thing to do as well, simply because he's such a big factor in the game. Like I said, I don't hate him, he's just overused. I know that voice acting can be extremely expensive, especially for smaller studios, so the idea of having only one main voice actor in your game is probably the biggest money saving decision I guess. It's not exactly only one voice actor because the angel and the devil have unique voices as well. The thing is, Biomutant only has a couple of really important characters. I find it hard to believe that hiring at least a couple of more guys to do voices for them would be more expensive than paying only one guy to record an absurd amount of voice lines. So it just comes down to a bad design decision, in my opinion of course. For example, Immortus Phoenix Rising is another game with a horrible name and I'm having problems pronouncing it. Fuck. For example, Immortals Phoenix Rising had narration in the game as well, but it was done a lot better. But those stars were bright. She stole your money. 
She did, yes. But I turned her into a juniper berry. If you think that's not a fair comparison because Ubisoft is a huge company and that game had a much bigger budget, well, these games cost the same. See my problem with the price now? Besides the world eaters, you have a couple of more main quests that you'll have to do. The main storyline is basically just one big revenge quest. The beast called Lupa Lupin destroyed your village and killed your family, but you managed to survive. Your character doesn't remember a lot from that time period, but you will regain some of those memories as you play the game, which also unlocks some special abilities. To be honest, I almost completely quit the game in the first 5 hours because of the extreme hand-holding, which is something I hate with a burning passion. But fortunately, the game opens up a lot more after that. The aura system affects the outcome of this main quest, as well as some dialogue options, I guess. I'm not really sure to what extent. The Ark main quest also didn't make a lot of sense to me because it has the same problems like the World Eaters. You have the option to bring 4 characters on this Ark, which would save them in case the world is destroyed. But yet again, if you're working towards saving the world, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'm missing something when it comes to the story in general, although I'm pretty sure I'm not. And the last main quest that I haven't mentioned yet is the Tribe Wars. But this main quest doesn't have a lot of story behind it, it's better to talk about it in the gameplay section. To sum up the story, even though it has some parts that don't make sense, I think it's pretty decent for a game of this type. You shouldn't take it so seriously after all. Although it's really obvious that they needed more time to flesh out the storyline in general. The biggest problem for me was the way it's told through narration. If you're one of those gamers who only play these types of games for the story, stay far away from Biomutants. To be honest, it would be kinda stupid to expect some amazing storytelling experience from a game of this type. This is a story with an unusual beginning. So, welcome to Biomutant. Like I said in the beginning, the main reason why this game managed to attract so much attention was the gameplay. Even in those old trailers, the gameplay always looked really smooth. And for the most part, it's definitely smooth, but it has a lot of problems. Let's start with the positive stuff first. The animations in combat are great, especially for ranged attacks and abilities. That was not hard to notice, even from the trailers. This game has a really cool idea of mixing Kung Fu style of fighting with the gunplay and for the most part it works great. The controls are responsive, maybe even too responsive in some situations. I could basically use two different abilities almost at the same time and I'm not sure if that's intended. But nevertheless, the controls are pretty snappy. The crafting system is by far the best part of the gameplay. It works pretty similar to Fallout's 4 crafting system, but it's a lot more flexible. If you want to make a new weapon from the scratch, you have to choose the base, which will determine the weapon type. I focused on two-handed slash melee weapons, a shotgun, and somewhere near the end I started using automatic rifle as well. Besides the base slot, you have a lot more modifications that you can put on your weapons, and there is a decent amount of different parts for each slot. There is no shortage of items that you're going to loot while exploring the world, and you can scrap the items if you don't need them. So that goes well with the crafting system obviously. It's the same story for crafting armor pieces, and I love the fact that you can actually have two different shoulder slots. I really think that more RPGs should have two different armor slots for the shoulders. Most of the gear that you're going to find is looking silly, which is a great fit with the overall theme of the game. Although I would love to see some proper armor sets. Looting containers is always exciting and some of them have the distinctive glow which can indicate the quality of items. If you're going to explore every part of the map, you're going to be properly rewarded. The thing I don't really like when it comes to this is the checklist system of each location. You can always see what kind of loot you can find, so the exploration can feel really mechanical or gamey. I much more prefer the dynamic exploration without any checklists. But the way this works actually fits the design of Biomutant's gameplay and its philosophy. I just don't like it very much. What I mean by that, Biomutant's gameplay has a lot of repetitive patterns, but we'll get to that soon. From the very beginning of the game, I wanted to focus entirely on two-handed weapons. The melee combat is not so refined as the ranged combat, but it's decent. It could be a lot better if it wasn't so weightless because of the bad sound effects. Each time I swing my weapon, it's like I'm hitting someone with a wet towel basically, the sound feedback is terrible.
It gets better when you have some elemental effects on your weapon, but it's still not very good. It's not an uncommon problem with lower budget RPGs, but it's definitely a legit problem. Other than that, the melee combat is pretty solid. I love how the parry system works and you can get out of some crazy situations with this move. Like I said before, the controls are responsive and you can basically chain your parry abilities a couple of times in a row if your timing is good. Like in this example. The parry move is really powerful with some cool counter attack animations. I played on hard difficulty and there is a decent amount of challenging fights in the game, but it could be a bit harder. However, there is a new game plus mode after you finish the game, which obviously makes the gameplay even harder. And you also unlock extreme difficulty setting, which I haven't tested yet, but I assume it's a similar difficulty as the new game plus modes. I mentioned before that the game has a decent amount of different looking creatures, so the enemy variety is pretty good. You will find a lot of mini bosses to fight in each area, but some of them are clearly unfinished because their attack moves are pretty rough and unfair. And this is a common problem throughout the game, a lot of features feel unfinished, like this extremely janky climbing animation. This small team of developers is extremely talented, there is no doubt about it, but they obviously needed some more time to polish all the features. Almost all of the problems I have mentioned so far seem to be caused by the lack of development time. Anyway, Biomutant has a good amount of abilities that you can learn. You have Biomutations and Psy mutations, and they require different mutation points. As you explore the world, you will find specific containers and totems which grant you these mutation points. However, I mentioned before that the aura system plays the part in this as well, so a couple of stronger abilities require a certain aura level. I only used 3 abilities throughout my playthrough because I focused a lot more on combo attacks with my weapons and the parry mechanic. What I found kinda disappointing when it comes to character progression is that 90% of Wung Fu moves are unlocked right from the beginning, you only get to learn a couple of them while you're playing. At least that's the case with the class I played with, the Sentinel. So almost this whole section in character progression is just a big combo move list. But the most unfinished parts of the gameplay are the tools and gadgets. Very early in the game you unlock the Mechatron and I'm pretty sure I only use it once when I had to. You can't summon him outside of a specific area. There might be more areas where you can summon him I'm not sure, but whenever I tried it didn't work. And it's a similar story when it comes to other vehicles, they obviously planned to use them a lot more. I've mentioned before that Biomutant has a lot of gameplay patterns, and I think this is one of the worst things about the game. Now look, I don't hate gameplay loops, I have played and I'm still playing ARPGs for hundreds of hours, and those games have the most repetitive gameplay loops. But one of the main gameplay loops in Biomutant makes the game feel really cheap. There are multiple clans in the game which the player can join, and each of those clans have different philosophy about the world. Your goal is to unite the clans by fighting and sometimes through dialogue as well. I have briefly mentioned outposts before and how they feel exactly the same because of the copy and pasted assets. Once you discover one of the outposts you have pretty much seen it all. That wouldn't be a big problem if the gameplay wasn't exactly the same. And again, when you defeat at least one of the outposts you have pretty much seen it all. The same cuts in place at the end with some copy and pasted generic dialogue. There are some slight variations when it comes to taking the main forts, where you have to fight the leader, but it's hardly any different. If you focus hard on this main quest, it gets really boring really fast. This whole thing wouldn't be so bad if the clan wars were just an optional side quest, but no, it's one of the major main quests. The most interesting thing about this is the unique weapons that you can get from the clan leaders, but I haven't used them much because their moveset wasn't particularly interesting to me. Another extremely repetitive gameplay feature that a lot of people might hate is this minigame. It's not exactly a thought provoking puzzle, it's always really easy to solve. But there are just too many of them and you can't choose to skip them. A lot of important main quest locations will usually have at least a couple of these that you have to solve. Although there are some interesting optional puzzles in the game. <laughs> 
Na ki si sana basurangu e nindigori aboritare a oto fantasi e le fale fafia. And we saved the worst for the end. The main quest where we have to kill four big bosses or world eaters as the game calls them. Let me start by saying something positive about these fights first. The presentation is pretty good except the first boss fight which is probably the worst in all aspects. And there goes all the praise. I won't spoil these fights but trust me, even if I do that it won't matter a lot. If I would have to describe any of these fights they would actually sound really cool. You get a mech and enter the radioactive zone and you end up in the belly of the beast. All of them sound cool on paper but it's an entirely different story when it comes to actual mechanics. By the way, all of that stuff was in the trailers so I don't consider them as spoilers. Like 90% of these fights are basically quick time events or some stupid minigame. Your gear doesn't matter at all because you will fight all of these bosses on your mounts and vehicles. I'm really struggling to understand the logic here, they have a pretty interesting combat system in the game, yet they choose to design the main boss fights around gimmicky mechanics. This can't be justified by the lack of development time because we could see parts of these fights in all trailers as well. I'm not saying that anything should be justified, they still want 60 bucks for the game. This is just bad game design, there is no way around it. I killed the first world eater on the stream and I really hope the rest of the bosses will be much better. Unfortunately, they are just as bad. I basically killed the first boss by just holding the right button and attack with an occasional dodge and some scripted action that you have to do. I'm just holding the right stick and not getting hit, so... I don't really want to talk about the sound much because I already covered voice acting and sound effects. That leaves us with the soundtrack and it's okay I guess, but it's kinda forgettable. I don't think there are a lot of tracks in the game, or maybe I just have that impression because it's forgettable, I don't know. Biomutant is an ambitious open world RPG, developed by a really talented but small studio. Even though it's been in development for more than a couple of years, a lot of features in the game feel unfinished. It's pretty obvious they needed more time to develop the game. It's a shame because the game is brimming with potential and I hope it will improve with future updates. I'm afraid no patch can fix some of the major problems I had with the game, like the world eaters. In its current state it's definitely not worth the price but I recommend getting it when it's on deep sale. Like I said it should be around 30 bucks or even 20 in its current state. The thing is I still think you can get a lot of fun from this game, at least I did. When I finished the game, I immediately started playing the new game plus mode, so take that as you will. And that will be all for this review. Tell me your thoughts about Biomutant in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG content. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.